moment you've ever felt like you've been disconnected or you ever felt like you didn't know where you belong or who you belong to I want to let you know that Isaiah 43 and 1 says he knows you by name and today you don't have to worry about if you feel like an orphan if you feel like one that is disconnected if you feel like one that is this push to the side I'm here today to let you know is that God knows your name and he's speaking it today and he is saying what you are victorious it doesn't matter what you've been through it doesn't matter what you're going through it doesn't matter what you will go through God knows your name and he is speaking your name to to say daughter or son you are victorious in the name of Jesus Christ he's whispering your name today what is he saying to you what is he speaking in your heart what is he speaking in your spirit what is he saying to you today he is saying you are one of his and I'm so grateful anybody just so grateful that God is your father today and he's calling you by name anybody grateful that in this moment you understand that you are his and he is yours and no matter what anyone else says you are enough in Jesus name we're so glad today and I believe in that God wants to speak something about who you are in this moment let's pray father we thank you for this moment that you've given us we thank you for the power of understanding that when we know who we are we know whose we are and in this moment we are claiming ownership in who you are to us and who we are to you you are our god and our savior and our lord and our redeemer and our forgiver and our healer and so today father we pray in this moment that we would be receptive to whatever it is that you're speaking to your people for we love you we honor and we thank you in jesus name we say amen can we give god a hand praise together for his goodness and his love in this place god bless you listen i want you to uh, take this opportunity to get uh, a, a moment of your bible and your notes because we're diving into a new series musicians thank you so much uh, can we just give a hand to our worship team today y'all oh my god such a blessing such an impact setting up the word of god so that we can be able to receive it and allow god's word to be in our heart so let's get right into god's word today and i'm believing as we are starting this new series which is called choosing your future i'm 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 excited because oftentimes we don't understand uh how much we play the part in choosing the future that god has already prepared and has planned for us but i don't want to go any further without saying thank you to each and every person, each and every one of you that were a part of our Easter with the Mix at Dunbar High School Field, it was amazing. It was so good to see each and every one of you, and we are excited and anticipating the next opportunity for us to be able to be in person. Thank you for making it such a successful event. We've gotten so many replies and uh, people are asking when's the next time and we cannot wait to let you know uh, uh, so that we can move forward with connecting with you once again in person and just worshiping together. I want to give a huge shout out to our volunteers, our dream team that makes it happen every time. Can I tell you they are amazing. They were there since 
early six o'clock in the morning, making sure things were together, making sure people's lives were impacted. But guess what? It wasn't just only the experience itself. It was our outreach. We had over 60 volunteers and we fed over 300 families. And we are so excited to be able to do this through you. Let me tell you, you are being the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I feel it's no better way to celebrate Easter than to show God's love to his people. And you were able to help us do that. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of every moment, no matter if you gave, no matter if you watch, no matter if you just came and sat and looked. We thank you for connecting and being a part of all that God is doing. So let's jump into the word of God today. I believe that God wants to speak something amazing into our lives. And the reason that we have connected in this series of choosing your future is because we understand initially the Bible is letting us know uh, through multiple scriptures that God has a plan and a destiny for our life. If we really understand these components is that God has, uh, uh, before the foundation of the world, he created a plan for us. He created a layout for us. And, and so the idea can be is that if God has already created the plan, then it's just going to happen. It doesn't matter what takes place. It doesn't matter what I do. And so I can just go along with whatever it is and God's plan will still be revealed in my life. And the problem with that is, is that just isn't Bible. That is not biblical that whatever you do doesn't matter because you're just going to fall back into the plan that God has already set. I want to let you know today that we're talking about choosing your future. Why is that important? Because God has set up a plan, but it does not mean the plan that God has set is the plan that you will fulfill. Because here's what you must know. We have the ability to have what's called free will. We have the ability to understand that what God has set in place is a requirement for us to obey him and to follow him. But just because there's a plan doesn't mean that we always follow. And I wanted to get into one of the uh, most prominent leaders in the Bible and uh, the greatest leader that I believe in Old Testament, uh, which is Moses. Moses is one in whom God uses uh, uh, to bring his people out of slavery. Moses, a man in whom had the ability to look at life differently, makes the decision that purpose is more important than preference. You hear me say it all of the time. We're choosing purpose over preference. And why do I believe that this is so important to us today? Is because... The option that we've been choosing oftentimes that I see people choosing is how they feel over what God has said. And we find ourselves in the place where we're basing our future off of how we feel instead of what God has spoken. And the reason that we tend to base our future off of what we feel is because we lack the understanding of what God has spoken and written for our life. The Bible lets us know that there is a book that is already written about our lives for the days are already written in it. The problem is, is that I haven't spent enough time with God to know what he's written. So I'm rewriting the story. I'm rewriting the story, and what I'm finding is, is that I don't like the way that the story is going. And there's nothing like finding yourself in a place where you know there's more, but you don't know how to get there. Moses found himself in a place where God had given him direction that he was to lead Israel into the promised land. Now, we understand that this is a type and shadow of salvation, which is 
God leading us out of our sin and out of our slavery and out of our brokenness. And so we understand this is not just a story, but it encapsulates what God is trying to do within each and every one of us. And I want to let you know that there is a choice you must make today about who you are and who you will be. The scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30 that I want to read is verses 15 through 17. And, and this is what is spoken through God. He says in verse 15, today I am giving you a choice. I'm giving you a choice. You can choose life and success or death and disaster. I'm commanding you to love the Lord your God, to live the way he has told you, and to obey his laws and teaching. Remember that. He's calling us to what? Live. He's calling us to love. And he's calling us to obey. He says, you're about to cross the Jordan River, and take the land that he is giving you if, somebody say if. if. There's always an if. We oftentimes will look at where we are and say to ourselves, I am deserving of this without meeting the requirements. Uh, oftentimes I want the product without meeting the standards. And God says, I have a standard for you to come to. It's not just that what I have for you will be freely given without you doing something in requirement. But what he says is, is I need for you to understand that there is something that you must obey. He says, if you obey him, you will live and become successful and powerful. It's the difference from existing, having enough, and living a mediocre life. He says, I'm calling for you to live. Somebody say live. Yeah. Live is different from existing. You can exist in a moment, but not truly live in a moment. H have you ever seen someone who is somewhere and something amazing is happening? And they're capturing, but they're not in it. It's one of the worst things to have to relive a moment you were in through a capture. The Bible continues in verse 17. It says this, but if you disobey and refuse to listen and are led away to worship other gods, you will be destroyed. You will not live long in that land across the Jordan that you are about to occupy. He says, now, I am now giving you the choice. Somebody say choice. Between life and death. Between God's blessings and curse. And I call, this is what you may not have ever looked into, but the Bible says, he says, and I call heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Right now, all of heaven is looking at your choice and what you're doing to say, listen, all you've got to do is choose God and you'll succeed success and power in your life. He said, I'm not even going to leave this just up to me. I'm calling all of heaven and earth to see the choice you make. So choose life. <laughs> Anybody know that? The result of where you are today is a product of what you did yesterday. Every day is a new opportunity 
to do something in the day to impact your tomorrow. Today impacts tomorrow. You got to remember this. When you make the decision today, it impacts what? Tomorrow. If we thought this way, then we would cherish and value the day that we are in because we would understand the impact of what it would make tomorrow. That's why the key to being successful in today was about what you did yesterday. Anybody ever known you, you ate that sub way too late? Anybody ever know you, you stayed out too late and it affected your what? Tomorrow. You were sluggish. You, you had a reasoning. I was out. I was late. This took place. This is the reason why I am where I am. The reason is because of my decisions. I want to let you know today is that God is not puppeting you. God is not being Geppetto and you are not being Pinocchio. There is no hands that God is weaving and, and trying to force you to do. What God is saying is, I have a plan that I have already set up for you. It's a plan for good things to take place, a plan that you will have hope and have a future. I have all of this in store for you, but you must choose this way. And oftentimes what I'm noticing is that the reason I'm in where I am is because of the choices that I keep making. I don't like the relationship I'm in. It's because you keep choosing the one that feeds your flesh and not your spirit. I don't like the financial state that I'm in. It's because you keep spending to impress and not saving to move forward. I don't like where I'm staying. It's because you're not making the best of where you are so that you can get to a better place of where you should be. It's about your value system. Somebody say value. It's about how you value what you're in. Here's the biggest component. If you don't like your situation, then change your value system. Because the way you value it will speak to the way that you prepare and look at it. If you don't like a relationship, if you don't like a marriage, if you don't like your home, if you don't like the way that you're operating, then change the value. The better the value you place on it, the more you'll take time for preparation and to handle it. If it makes sense to you, the idea and object is to find yourself in a place where you're making decisions according to your purpose and destiny and not just to your preference and desire. Can we go to Hebrews? Let's hit Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to start at verse 23. And this is what I believe. There were... Areas, four life shaping areas that Moses had to take place in order for him to make life's decisions better. Let's, let's kind of jump into it. In Hebrews, it says, it's by faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw. He was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. It says he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. You should underline looking ahead. Because some of us are stuck looking at the right now. And you're making decisions off of what you feel right now. 
here's a way to talk and here's a way to look at your condition at the moment. The right now, if you're always speaking about the right now, you're overly consumed with the moment and not focused on the future. You've ever had someone speak to you and tell you how often they're tired? How often things aren't going well? How often they don't feel like it? But you've ever seen someone that has true vision? They understand that what they feel now is a part of what's needed to get to where they're going. And just because you feel it now doesn't mean that's where it stays. See, your choices of today affect your tomorrow. By faith, Moses, they understood he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. It says, by faith, when he had grown up, somebody said grown up. When he had matured, when he had began to grow to a place where the decision making was no longer on his parents, it was on him. The Bible says he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It says he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Can I tell you real quick that sin is pleasurable? Can I tell you, you don't have to keep being churchy and, and acting like it ain't. No, 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 no. You know when you're getting them shots, it's pleasurable. You know you, you, you know how you feel when you're going out on, you know, it's, it's girls night or it's fellas night. You, you know how you feel when, when they're looking at you and you got the whip all cleaned up and, and you strolling down in Fells Point and, and Canton and, and, and you're driving slow because uh, you put on everything that was needed so that people could see you the way they were supposed to see. You know you put that outfit on that the church folk don't have no idea about. If they saw you out in public, they would be like, my God, I don't know what's happening, but it's good to see you. <laughs> It says sin is pleasurable. We teach it as if sin is just the worst thing we have ever felt. You got to stop your lying. It says it. It says then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. It says by faith he left Egypt not fearing the king's anger. It says he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. The question becomes, who do you see when you're out doing what you do? It's about a choice. Somebody say a choice. I was on the phone with a friend yesterday, and we were laughing, just kidding around, and and, and they, were, they were ordering food, right? And they started ordering food. And they told me the price of it. And I thought, everybody knows Chick-fil-A is just high, but it's just good. So you deal with it, you know what I mean? But there are other places that are high. And, 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 and the person was in the drive-thru, and I could hear the conversation and immediately knew they weren't at Chick-fil-A. There was no, it's a pleasure to serve you. There was no uh, 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 knowing your name. They didn't care nothing about that person's name. They didn't, they back like, act like they could barely hear the person. And, and, and it was so funny is because I knew it. And I said to them, well, you made the choice to go there. I said, I said, where you at, Wendy's? <laughs> I said, yeah, I can tell you, you're ordering like you at Chick-fil-A, but you're getting service like you at Wendy's. <laughs> and oftentimes, we're expecting results from things that we know we made broken choices for. 
You knew you weren't going to get it's a pleasure to serve you. And yet we get frustrated with the choices that we already make that we know aren't going to get us the results that we ever thought we were. And somebody was telling you all along, it's not what it looks like. And I told him, I said, well, you took the shortcut and went there. The problem is, is when you get in a Chick-fil-A line, oftentimes you have to wait. But often what you're waiting for is quality. Oftentimes, mm, that just spoke to some single person right there. Your reason you're waiting. All right, I won't go there. This is not a relationship series. But you are looking for quality. Stop speeding up a process that's going to get you the lousy results that you got before. Make the choice for today for what you want to see what? Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we're getting it. We're getting it. It's about choices. Moses had choices. The Bible lets us know that uh, Pharaoh's daughter sees Moses uh, while she's bathing in the Nile, and, and she picks Moses up and takes him in as her own son. And Moses is now the son of one of the greatest and one of the most powerful men ever, which is Pharaoh. Pharaoh and his grandfather. But here's what it is, is Moses makes a decision to recognize the reality of who he truly is. I can even act like Pharaoh's grandson and fake it and enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Or I can make the connection and be who God has called for me to be and suffer for a little while and now have people preach about me over 6,000 years later. See, had Moses been the grandson of Pharaoh, we would have never heard about him. But the fact that he made the decision to be who God had planned for him to be, we speak about him today as one of the greatest leaders ever, is the reason that nobody knows you is because you made the decision to live out a life that isn't yours. Pastor, I want to be something. I want to be great. I want to be successful and powerful. How about you be who God called you to be? And stop imitating what you see around you because no one notices you when you're being someone else. God's chosen you today. The question is, will you choose him? Here's one of the things that I believe that was so important as we go back through scripture and we look at this. In shaping Moses' life. The first thing that it says in Hebrews 11, 24, it lets us know that Moses refused. So point number one, refuse to be defined by others. It says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, when he had matured, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Can I tell you, Moses was having an identity crisis. Anybody know about that as a teenager? Some of you know about that as an adult right now. You don't know what in the world you're doing. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you're trying. And you're trying to figure it out. And you're saying, which decision will I make? And I'm here today to let you know, make the decision of being who you know you are. Do not let anybody define your identity. You could pretend to be Pharaoh's daughter's son and have all the luxuries and all the easiness of life and have the people feeding you grapes, but the impact that your life will truly make will never come to a head. Some of us are having minimal impact because we're choosing to live a life that God didn't call us to live. You got the house, but you're not making a difference. You got the car, but you're still doing the same thing. And God said, I called you to change the world. Just tell somebody real quick, I'm a world changer. 
Just type it in the chat. I'm a world changer. If you understood who you were, then you wouldn't settle for what you could get. Yeah, I could choose the luxurious things of life, but I want to be different. The Bible says he chooses to go and be a slave. He, he chooses to deal with the people that, are, that have the, the Pharaoh's foot on their neck. He chooses to avoid pride. L let me tell you something. Who are you letting determine your identity today? Is it, is it your parents? Did they tell you who you're supposed to be? Is it, is it, is it, what, who, who is, who is really determining it? Is it your spouse? Who, whose idea are you living out? Because if you would live out your life, you would be who God's called you to be, and you would impact the people you're supposed to impact. Let me hit my 20s, even 30s, teens. Let me let y'all know something real quick. One year or one month or two years in something that you don't like doesn't mean you go quit and find something else. Things take time. Somebody say time. You don't know what you need to know when your feelings kick in. You got to go past your feelings to realize who you're becoming so that you have an ability to recognize who you truly are. You can't really determine who you truly are by jumping from every feeling to feeling. And I'm here today to let you know that I got a little old school in me because I got a lot of guys around me that talk about how they feel more than the purpose of what God has spoken. You know, I'm feeling, I, can I be honest? I don't really care how you feel. Like, I care, but I don't care. I may be an old school guy, but I'm not interested in hearing about every time you're hurt. And I'm not here to, uh, and interested about uh, talking to you about every time you're sleepy. Who cares? Purpose is on the line. And if your value was about who you were becoming instead about what you're feeling, you wouldn't have so many opportunities to talk about what you feel. You would talk about who you're becoming. I feel tired, but man, am I impacting the world like never before. That's just me. I'm a little old school. That's how I work. Like you want powwow? I don't want powwow. My wife got the COVID shot. Man, I need Jesus. I know I do. Because I'm so lacking empathy. And I know she was feeling it. She was like, babe, my arm. So I was just like, man it up. Mine's what's too. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no crying around here. She's like, but I'm, I'm feeling chills. I was like, well, just warm up. You be good. Y'all like, y'all, that's murderous. Here's what, here, here's, what, here's what we're doing these days. We're giving out participation awards and wondering why people aren't getting anywhere. You feel, you feel, no, just take off. No, work through. No, you know what? I know you're uncomfortable. How about you just sit this one out? No, deal with uncomfortableness so you can learn how to be able to approach people and talk to them. Well, you know, I don't, I don't really like talking that way. It makes me feel, then learn how to get through it. Because if you operate out of everything you feel, then all people are trying to do is dance around the way you feel and the way you move. And they never want to deal with you because it's hard to deal with someone that can't see purpose over preference. You tired today? You know, my grandfather, my father used to say, uh, that's, that's fine, should have went to bed earlier. Get up so we can do something. And we, we giving out glad you came awards. And we're raising up a generation that can't get through anything. 
because everything is about every emotion you feel every minute. And I'm trying to figure out why you got so many feelings. Because you don't have purpose in mind. And you're creating your life based on how you feel. And people will say this, man, you hard. I was just like, nah. I just know what it takes to get to a place where I value my purpose over my preference. And I started noticing people don't want to sit around and hang around me complaining about where I am and noticing I'm not getting but so far. It's time to make a choice. Refuse to be defined by others. Romans 12 and 2 says this, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove and practice the plan of God for you is good. Exodus 23 and 2 says this, don't follow the crowd in doing wrong. Can you stop following everybody and start making some decisions for yourself? Can you start following what you know to be, you know, I don't want to go out tonight. Just come on out tonight, girl. I don't know why you're tripping. You know you need a little relaxation. No, nah, I don't need that kind of relaxation. Girl, just come on and get with it. And because you are so influenced, you go. And the me, I'm, I'm just telling you, immediately, once you make that decision, you've lost your identity. Once you give someone control, you lose your identity of who you are. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 4 says this, our purpose is to please God, not people. He is the one who examines the motives of our hearts. Please God, not people. I tell people this, like we, we have what's called mixed groups. You're like, join a group. Uh, you know what? I'm not all into people being all in my life. Cool, you're just not into getting healing. I get it, that's fine. You're into doing life on your own so you can be in your little box doing it the way you like to do it so that you aren't accountable to anybody else. So that's the reason you stay where you are because your accountability network is so low and so minuscule that you like staying in the comfortable state that you are, which is not healing. It's enough to keep you recovered but not recovered all the way. So I still have an opportunity to grab back and feel sorry for myself and stay where I am and not reach any of my goals and not be successful or powerful because it feels good for me to go back and whine and find people that can be in a place that they're not growing either. So what we can do is complain together and not grow together and stay in the same place together and not be uncomfortable because uncomfortableness will really bring a sense of growth and I don't really wanna grow. So I'll make the choice to blame it on God that I'm not where I need to be because of all the plans that I had previous in my life when it's not about what happened to me but it's about with the choices I'm making right now. And so I just stay where I am. And some of us won't admit it, but we like our pain. <laughs> We've been using it as our excuse. It's your excuse not to do more. It's your excuse not to operate in faith. It's your excuse to not get your finances together. It's your excuse so that you can do as less as possible and make as less impact as possible. Today, I want you to refuse to be defined by others. Point number two. Choose short-term pain over long-term gain. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven twenty-five, 25, Moses chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Where do you need to accept responsibility in your life that you keep handing it off? Where in your life are you still blaming people for where you are? Who are you blaming for your spiritual condition? 
Can I tell you one thing I know? You're as close to God as you want to be. Don't blame a church. Don't blame a pastor. Don't blame uh, a community of people. Don't blame a lack of Bible studies. Don't you, you blame nobody else for the reason that you are where you are. You're as close to God as you want to be. Well, you know, that church that I had went to, they didn't preach the way I really felt they should preach. The problem is, is you just didn't really study the way you should have studied. Most of us won't choose short-term pain for long-term gain. We won't save money because we keep having this urge to spend to impress people who don't really care about us and meeting up with the Joneses. But the problem is, is that we look like the part, but we aren't really the part. (laughs) I look like I got money even though I'm broke. I look like I'm going somewhere when I really ain't got gas to go nowhere. Here's the promise about pain. One thing you must know, God will use it to help you grow. Romans 5, 3 and 4 says this, we can have joy in our troubles because we know that these troubles produce patience and patience produces character and character produces hope. The second thing we need to know about pain is that God will reward me in heaven. Guess what? Everything you are supposed to receive does not just happen immediately and right now. For the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, it says the present troubles are quite small and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurably great glory that will last. Somebody say forever. Forever. Stop getting caught up in the uncomfortable moments that are lying in just right now. Point number three, what Moses had to do, he had to choose what God values, not what culture does. You must choose what God values, not what culture does. Verse 26 says, Moses regarded, meaning clarify, disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to His reward. Look ahead to your reward. Stop looking at instant gratification. If I ask you right now, what are the three top values in your life? Could you write them down? Because here's the thing. If you don't know your values, you don't know how to live. If there's no value system, then you don't know what to uphold. Let me tell you what the world's values are. We've got three things that you need to understand. It's popularity, prestige, and power is one. Everyone wants to be known. Everybody wants somebody to know know them. And everybody wants to walk around like they are it. The second one is pleasure. Everyone wants to do what they want when they feel it. And the third one is possession. Everyone wants to have what they want when they want it. This is what our world values. It's the things to be, the things to feel, and the things to have. 1 John 2 and 17 says this, The world and everything in it people desire is passing away but those who do the will of god live for ever it's about the reward we're here why are we teaching because i believe that you must start you must be in a place where you're starting to choose your future and not allowing your life to just happen some of us are going with the current of life and we're like whatever happens happens If the job happens, it happens. If they say this, it happens. If I get someone, it happens. When will you choose your own future? Let me tell you what God values. God values. God's purpose is more important than popularity. Nobody would have known Moses as being Pharaoh's grandson. 
People are more important than pleasure. Moses helping his own people, the slaves, become free. And peace of mind is more valuable than possessions. There's nothing like worrying about something you bought and not having some peace and knowing that you can keep it. Some of us are working for things, and things aren't working for us. These are the things that God values more than anything. And last, number four, is that you're called to choose to live by faith, not fear. Choose to live by faith, not fear. Verse 27 says, by faith, Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. Some of you are so fearful of people that you hold people in greater reverence than you do God. And you'll compromise your purpose and destiny to fulfill someone else's pleasure or thoughts. I left a job at the most pivotal season in my life. It was the season where I was supposed to almost take over the business. And the Lord told me just very clearly, it's time for you to go. Can I tell you that God will tell you to do things when you think you've got everything so perfectly together? And I'll never forget the day I gave in my resignation, the CEO came in and said to me, what will it take to keep you here? I said this, oh, nothing. See, I didn't have to question the number because I knew the call. Some of us are looking for God to tell you the position. I just knew God had called me. I didn't know this is where we were going to land. But I knew God had spoken. And some of us won't move until we have a 100% of what God is leading us to. God said, I'll send you to a promised land. But the problem is, is they never knew what the promised land looked like. God has a promised land for your life. Know that for sure. And if you obey him, you'll get there. But here's what you must understand is that the promised land may not look like what you think it should. Your responsibility is to obey, not to question. When the CEO came in and sat, he said, what's the number? I said, there is no number. God told me to do this. Today, some of you are in the most compromising position because you're trying to choose between your destiny and God's destiny for your life. And I'm here today to let you know that there's a choice you must make in this moment. Galatians 2 and 6 says this, no one can please God by simply obeying his law. So we put our faith, somebody say faith, in Jesus Christ and God accepted us because of our faith. He didn't accept you because you were so good. He accepted you because of your faith today. So what you must understand is your values will determine your future. And if you don't get your values in order, your future will look the same every time you look ahead and you will always question what God is speaking because you haven't set up a value system that's going to move you into your future of who God's called for you to be remember your decisions of today affect your tomorrow your values determine your future. Can we pray today? 
We're going to be in this series for the next couple of weeks. Why is this series so important to me? Because what I understand is, is that people are choosing Jesus as their savior, but they're not following him as their God. Lord, save me. Just don't tell me what to do. And so you're operating in great church, but you have no relationship. And I'm here today to let somebody know, whatever you're trying to put in your mind that it's not going to cost you, it's going to cost you. But remember, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. You got to say to yourself, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to walk this thing through. And I'm going to stop quitting because of how I feel. And I'm still going to start moving because of what he said. And today you'll see the promises of God fulfilled in your life today. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Father, we thank you in this place for your presence. And I pray today, Lord, that we would grasp a hold of understanding what your word is speaking to us today. And that we not just be hearers, help us to do. Lord, we don't want to be receivers of information and the seeds that we are receiving fall on stony ground. I pray today, Lord, that the seeds that are being planted from all over in us, those good seeds will be sown into good ground. Father, we thank you for the person right now that has been making the choice to follow a false life, but is giving their life over in this moment to say, Lord, I want to follow you. We thank you. We love you. We choose you today in Jesus' name. We declare, we say amen. Come on, help me celebrate God in this place for his goodness and his love. I say this to you today, if you're here and you're making this decision to say, listen, I, I, I want to follow the path that God has for my life. How can I do this? How can I connect? I want to pray a prayer with you. And it's not the prayer that saves you, but it truly is the posture of your heart to God. If you'll repeat this prayer after me, we're all going to say it together. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I commit to putting you first in my life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Come on, celebrate those that have made that decision in this place. Listen, we are so excited. If that's you, can you just put in the comment section online, I need Jesus. And if you made that decision, you prayed that prayer, you recommitted your life to Jesus, we want to connect with you because we have free resources to get you to the place of knowing God even more. We don't want you just saved. We want you saved, living, moving successfully and powerfully in whom God has called for you to be. I want you to text this word, the mix, to the number 94000. And you have an option there to choose if you're a first time guest or if you want prayer or you made the decision to accept Jesus into your life. Well, we love you at the mix and we're excited about this series choosing your future and we're believing God is going to change your life like never before. We love you and we believe in God for great things. God bless you all and we will see you next week. Woo! Thank you again for watching the Mix Church online experience. And listen, while you're here, join the Mix Online extended family to check us out every single Sunday. Subscribe to this channel, follow us, hit the like button so that you don't miss a single video. And then also share this one, share this video with a friend or loved one. Now, I'm speaking to you. 
If you took the courageous step at the end of the message to give your life to the Lord Jesus for the first time, we want you to text the word The Mix to 94000. We'd love to send you some resources and not only that, celebrate that wonderful decision that you just made in joining the kingdom of God. And if you desire to connect with us with The Mix and you want to learn more about us, we encourage you to take our online growth track. It's a three-step process for you to learn more about The Mix, but discover more about your purpose for design, and you can join the team. So register for Growth Track right now at our website, themixchurch.com. And in this moment, we also encourage you, if you haven't already done so, and if the Lord is leading you, to give by texting The Mix to 77977. And you can also support the ministry by going to The Mix app and clicking the Give button at the bottom of the page, or even through Cash App. That's right, through Cash App. We have it all for you. And finally, if you'd like us to pray with you, text the mix to 94,000 and we will do just that. Listen, thank you so much for being a part of today's experience. We just want to say God bless you and we will see you soon.